for asking. It's episode nine, which means it's the dying stages of the competition, and I'm dying to introduce you to the people dying to win my gold-dyed face. So please give a mighty cheer for Ian Sterling, <laughs> Joe Thomas, Lou Sanders, Paul Sinha, and Sean Gibson. And he's here beside me, I can tell, because of the heavy breathing and the wet noises. It's <laughs> Little Alex Hall! Um, it's good to be here. Cold, though, isn't it? Cold. Yeah, it is cold. Cold. And I'm uh, not allowed to wear gloves, obviously, because of my um, iPad, but I've just discovered something called fingerless gloves. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what? They're edible, are they? <laughs> what are you talking about? Are they edible fingers? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You can eat your fingers, but I want you to act as if you're eating your real fingers. Right. Come on, then. What's the prize category this time? Mm. Take your time. <laughs> you swallow your fingers oh. down, then we'll get on with the show. Mm. All gone. <laughs> All gone, Daddy. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> it's the best form of protection, OK? <laughs> Greg... Greg will judge which is the best form of protection, handing out five points to the person that brought it in. The person with the most points at the end of the show will take all five forms of protection home and be especially safe and sound. Uh, Paul Sinha, what is your um, brilliant form of protection that you've brought with you? At the end of every series of The Chase, they used to give us a big luxury hamper. But one, one series, they decided to give us this. There we go. <laughs> There's only one of these in the world, because on the back of it, it says... <laughs> the cinnamon. Number one, it protects you from the cold. Number two, it protects you from getting high temperatures. Number three, it protects you from uh, having children because no one will fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I, uh, yeah, would you? No, no, no I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. Imagine it protects you from forming friendships. It is <laughs> one of the worst things I've ever seen, Paul. I'm Sean. I've brought some sweaty eggs. <laughs> Please be hen's eggs. <laughs> They're not my eggs. <laughs> They don't seem very protected. Is it the Tupperware box I'm celebrating here? If you open that Tupperware yeah. on a train, yep. carriage to yourself. Protected. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You've brought a sandwich box full of smelly eggs. Smelly eggs. Oh, nice to establish last place this mm. early, isn't it? <laughs> no. uh, Joe. Best form of protection is a bunker, of course. Of course. Uh, so this is uh, access to a bunker, and that will protect you against disasters, man-made or otherwise, and... It is the bunker the prize? Access to the bunker. It's a voucher to visit a bunker. Yeah, well, there it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. What a cool bunker as well, though. Yes, they do paintballing and laser quest in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to be near it in, in case there was a, a nuclear war. Well, yeah, I mean, just move near it. I, I, I... <laughs> move near it, mm. yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. So, you've, you've got me a ticket to a novelty bunker. Good. Hey, Ian. To protect yourself, you need to be, like, a warrior. So I got myself a sumo wrestler suit. There he is. <laughs> Best form of protection. Unless you've got a pin. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you'd have some questions. So I, I went on the website... Not, not really, I, but I've made a lot of judgments. <laughs> I went on the website. Is it suitable for a five-year-old? Yes, if they're tall. <laughs> Why doesn't this fit in my hand luggage? <laughs> and they've written, have you tried deflating it? It's surprisingly comfortable. It comes complete with built-in nappy and sumo hair hat for extra authenticity. Got a built-in nappy? Yes. To protect yourself from yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right, Lou, I mean, can you better any of these? I suspect so. Mine is a coat of protection, so it's got... Let's have a look, actually. Here is the coat um... of protection. OK. <laughs> <laughs> to glance at, rubbish. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, are I am. Are you joking with me? Um, so, beekeeper's hat, protect against bees. A, a, a prayer to protect against the devil. A uh, cross <laughs> vampires. It's got... Washing up gloves to protect your hands. Um, and also, the jacket 
is waterproof. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to say, Lou um, did tell me she wasn't putting a condom on there because she didn't want to be tacky. <laughs> Bear that in mind. Well, all right, then. Let's make some um, judgments. Shouldn't be too hard, should it? Smelly old eggs. <laughs> three points. OK, three points to Sean. Yeah. A voucher for a novelty bunker. Three points. Ian Sumo suit. Four points. Don't know why. Just <laughs> visually appealed to me. Yeah. Four points to Paul. I wouldn't go near him if he was wearing that horrible thing. And how can I deny being protected from so many things? Five points goes to Lou Sand. There we go. <laughs> Let's see a task. Yes. Uh, do you fancy a bit of refuse and a bit of bouncing? I hope so. <laughs> Hello, Ian. Yo. Ah. Hello, Lou. Hiya. OK. Bounce one of these balls so that it lands in that bin. That bin? That bin. Bounce one of these balls so I can pick the most times so that it lands in that bin. After propelling the ball, you may not touch or strike it on its way to that bin. Most bounces between propulsion and that bin wins. Nicely phrased. You must use the ball you touch first. I think you touched the yellow one. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I did. Probably did. You have 20 minutes. Your time starts now. Bounce one of these balls the most times it lands in that you, bin. Yeah. Can I move the bin? Yeah, did you read all of the um, task? Again? Well, there was one particular line that's relevant now. After propelling the ball... Not that one. Oh, Jesus, you must use the first ball you touch. Yeah, you've gone for the rubber band ball. Is that not the bounciest? You'll never know. So I've just got to bounce and get in? Yeah. <laughs> so both ladies uh, made their decision very quickly by accident They're by having a lovely stroke of a ball. Yes, the fingers, <laughs> the fingers made the decision rather than the brain. Let's see some stuff. OK, uh, first to bounce, it's the natural sportsmen, Paul and Joe. Well, I can't touch any of them without... Uh, it's like chess, isn't it? Whew. <laughs> Hard to know, isn't it? Yeah, I, I wouldn't rush it. <laughs> oh, so hard. So hard. <sighs> Which ball do you think is the bounciest? I've decided that I don't think it matters. I've got other things on my mind. <laughs> I'll go with this one. Let me see how bouncy that is. That's not at all bouncy. You'll take the tennis ball. Right. Now we've got one registered. OK. OK. Oh, come on, you dick. Four. Oh, come on. Just come on. I think that was a two. Eight. But not into the bin. You're stuck. Two. Yeah, two still. I think I've got three in me. That's two again. A Some good two, two, though, I thought. Isn't two, that's a better two. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of bounces. How many do you think that was? I want to say four, but... That's the furthest I've got it away from where I need it to be. Oh. Well done, Paul. You OK? Yeah, it was fun. Well, I've written two quotes down from you. Um, I had other things on my mind, and I'm interested to know what they were. And I've also written down, it's like chess, isn't it? Long pause? <laughs> Oof. <laughs> what was on your mind? What was on my mind? I was wondering if I could remember what the 1984 Christmas number one was. I <laughs>
<laughs> and then I remembered it was Band Aid. Do they know it's Christmas? And then I moved on to the task. It was. A, a, a... <laughs> I'd argue it was Power of Love by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Well, you'd argue wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, a better two. Yeah, well, it was a better two. It was a better two. And you uh, always thought you had a three in you. I've always thought that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in the end, it turned out to be a four. Mm, I think it was four bounces, and I've yeah. Googled it. There's only three whole numbers lower than that. There's three, two and one. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> yeah. It is quite a low score. Uh, Paul, nine complete bounces. So, Thank yeah. You. Lovely. Not too bad in the lead of the moment. <laughs> ah, what's that sound? It's part two coming after the break. Taskmaster, what was happening before the break, little Alex Horn? Hi there, pleased to meet you all. I've got a new bicycle. <laughs> the task in play is as follows. Bounce a ball the most times before it lands in the bin. And, in a video all by himself, it's a bouncy, bouncy Mr Ian Sterling. <laughs> That didn't really help. <laughs> See, that could be an issue, that. That's risky. Oh, now then! This could be a winner, winner, chicken dinner, this. Oh, no, this isn't harder than I thought. Six? I made that six as well, yeah. Seven? No, six again. Can I use some of these pillows? That is perfect, gorgeous. This is interesting. Watch. Three and a half minutes. That was loads. Is it in the bin? No, but it is. <laughs> Where's the ball in? Oh. <laughs> How many is that? Six. Six? No, no, sorry, sorry. No, how many have you put down? 36. Yeah, 36, I'll take it. 36, baby! I will do my best to ignore your cry of baby at the end. <laughs> Throughout the competition, Ian has often been the person who's gone, right, I'm going in, let's fucking do this! Yeah. Without a lot of thought. But that was great tactical thinking from the start. I found it remarkable that out of the five, he's the only one who picked the ball whose main adjective is bouncy. Yeah. <laughs> the only one who picked the bouncy ball. I mean, the drain pipe systems work a genius, isn't it? How many bounces were within the pipe? I think it was the same as my age used to be, 36. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was 36. <laughs> OK, only two people left and we've grouped them together because it really helps to speed things up. Here are Lou and Sean. <laughs> Bounce it the most times. Can you just explain it, please, in layman's terms? <laughs> Hold on a minute. You've got to propel a ball. Yeah. And it's going to end up in the bin. Yeah. And I'm going to count how many times it bounces between you and the bin. Have you got any string, please? There's a shed. Oh, no. <laughs> it's the grass. Have you thrown things before? <laughs> OK. Ready? Yeah. Bounce. <laughs> I can't help thinking I've chosen the wrong method. <laughs> that bounced about 12 times then. In school, they used to have, like, effort badges. Have you thought about that? You want an effort badge? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is interesting. Feels like it's easier with a net. It's easier with a net. Imagine if I didn't get it in the bin now. Possibility. Propel. Thanks, Lou. Thank you. What a system. Is it valid? Well, I mean, to bounce means to cause to move up or away after hitting a surface. I can't see a problem with them. Nor can I. Oh. I've got an issue. They, like, started it like, over lots of times. If you use that definition, all the times I bounced it, you can use all of them no. up until my goal. The rule was you couldn't touch it between propelling it and the bin. That, and wasn't, what, that wasn't written on the card. It was exactly oh, what you read out bit... at the start of it. 
<laughs> they didn't touch it between propelling and the bin. If anything, if I may interject, Bibir, <laughs> <laughs> I would suggest that the ladies used a bounce stabiliser. <sighs> <sighs> Wonderful. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Yes. How many bounces did they get, big boy? Sean, 112 bounces, which is wow. one, 108 more than Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and Lou, who did her system for the full 10 minutes, uh, there were 225 that struck the ground. That's 221 more than Joe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid it's one point to Joe, two to Paul, three to Ian, four to Sean, but five points to Lou Sanders. <laughs> Can I have the scores, please? Yes, uh, the series scores, first of all. Two people tied in second, Ian and Joe, on a 1-2-6, but she is stretching her lead. Lose on 142. <laughs> in this particular episode, uh, Joe is in last place with four, and Lou Sanders is in the lead with ten. Wow. <laughs> there we go. Good. Show me more. Show me sweet little more. I will, and you're dust in time for this next one. Okay. Hello. Oh, hello, Lou. Guess what? Hello. Hi. Right, today, apparently, I've been saying sandwich wrong my whole life. Sandwich? Sandwich, I've been saying. No, it's sandwich. Yeah. Found it out today. <laughs> Do you want me to... Um... OK. Oh. Dust. What's... OK. That's interesting. Devise the most delicious dust. You have five minutes to choose your ingredients, then ten minutes to make your delicious dust. And serve it in this dustpan. Your time starts now. I definitely want glitter. I've decided that I'm going to go savoury. I don't think Greg gets to the size that he is, but de dealing with uh, non-savoury products. I don't think that Greg gets to be the size he is by eating non-savoury products. <laughs> I have no idea why you're such a freak of nature, Greg. Um, <laughs> I have no idea whether it's diet or pituitary tumour. It could be a combination of both. <laughs> I had no idea you were suggesting that I was tall because I was ill. I thought <laughs> you were suggesting I was fat because I like cheese. <laughs> but e either way, thanks. <laughs> uh, Sean, obviously, first instinct, glitter. Yeah. You've tried to get glitter in every task. I've realised that it's embarrassing for a middle-aged lady to like glitter and princesses as much as I do. Do you want to see the glitter lady uh, dust herself off with Paul Sinar? Uh... <laughs> Have a look. Okay, here are Paul and Sean. Okay, that looks dusty. It's got a big serving. It's gonna be a big serving. Mm. Popping candy. How much are you planning to make? Well, it's Greg's a big lad. Not just got the demeanour of a king, he's the size of Henry VIII. What can you tell me about Henry VIII? Um, Henry VIII was a murderous misogynist, is I think the best way to describe him. He's been transformed into a figure of respect by a patriarchal educational system that doesn't really care for the fate of wives. But other than that... <laughs> Look at that for dust. Oh, don't hurt yourself. Oh, have you hurt yourself? Oh, no, you've grated yourself. Oh, that looks horrible. Just a, maybe a rubber glove. Just worry about your fingers, because you're already bleeding out of one of them. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm. Glitter. Oh, 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 God. I'm going to try to pick it up using the, the brush. Mmm, <laughs> it's very nice. Here we go. <laughs> Whoa! Let me try. You don't... Mmm. Mmm. The popping happens afterwards. Right, well, thank you. Enjoy. Will do. <laughs> right, well, I'm, I'm going to have to take your lead on this to some degree. I mean, was the flavour improved by both contestants' blood? <laughs> <laughs> You've got my 
mine and Paul's DNA inside you. <laughs> <laughs> they were both either ends of the sweet and savoury scale. They were, they, they were quite nice, I suppose. Could I argue that most of Sean's dust, maybe the work was done for her by sweet manufacturers? I did grate my own chocolate. And yours was grated cheese. I yeah, just wanted to go for delicious parmesan and pancetta. Let's allow them both as dust. Now, you tell me which was the most delicious of the two. I really like Paul's. Sorry, I just preferred it. Well, Fourth think... place! <laughs> Get it! <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> OK, time for the adverts to do their thing. See you again soon for the beginning of the second half of the show. Yes, please, please! <laughs>and listen to my little assistant tell you about what's been going on all the time whilst licking his lips. <sighs> Before the break, they were trying to make the tastiest dust, and they still are. Next up, presenting the vegan dust option, it's Lou Sanders. Oh. I'm just making some dust, yeah? The most delicious dust, yes. Enemy, an enemy of Greg's. That would be delicious for him. Who are his big enemy, his main three enemies that are dead? That are dead. OK, so, so, so racism, nobody likes racism. So maybe we have something that typifies racism and we burn it and then we eat the dust. Good. Well, let's keep it light, actually. <laughs> oh, a rasnag. You know the sexist ones. Uh, well, it's porn, but it's not done in a tasteful way. We burn it and then we top it off with fizz whiz. What is fizz whiz? It's the popping candy. Disgusting. Something naughty, something nice, here we go. How would you suggest I eat this? Tongue in the bowl. <laughs> Just tongue in the bowl? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tongue in the bowl. Delicious. It's, it doesn't feel nice because you're eating out for the bloody pan, but that's not my rules. I don't like the black bit. I flambeed the porn. <laughs> uh, Raz Mag. I called them Jazz Mags when I was a young man. Yeah, you can call them Jazz Man. Jazz or Raz? Clunge? I... <laughs> nice. Nice to combine popping candy with a powerful statement. Mm. Lovely. Like, she's like she was burning the objectification of women and then getting you to consume it. But was it delicious? No, it wasn't. <laughs> I've eaten a lot of things on this programme. This is the worst thing I've ever eaten. The popping candy was lovely, but um, it had a lot of burnt porn. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we've got two guys. Let's call them Joe. And let's call them the other one, Ian. <laughs> I'm going to take out some of the lumps. Das! Just the one, baby bell. Das! Das, the chutney. The chutney's just to make it look nice, yeah? I feel bad just scraping bits of pork fat off my hands and then asking you to eat it. That's not really dust, is it? What's that, just a salt? How much salt are you putting on to? Fair amount. So this is cracker dust, and with your crackers you've got cheese, baby bell dust, mm -hmm. stilton dust, mm -hmm. cheddar dust. Um, we have crispy pork skin with some uh, chicken reduction. And then to follow, we have a violet sherbet with a bit of honeycomb. Who's that? What's odd about it is that a cracker is normally crunchy. It's not crunchy. No, it'll go gloopy, won't it? What do we think? No, it's salty. It's salty? OK. Ooh. Yep, OK. In a good way? No. In a... <laughs> oh. mm. <laughs> you could actually use this as a straw. <sighs> but it's good. Does <laughs> it work? That's the driest thing that's ever happened. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is pudding. OK. Atta boy. How's that? Oh, that's lovely. That's good? Mm, that is nice. Well, nice to spend this time with you. Thanks. Joe seemed like a professional waiter. Yeah. Posher than a waiter. Head waiter. Small servings, but beautifully presented. Mm. And we sat down next to each other, didn't we? We did. 
You always sit next to the waiter in a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> the waiter watches you. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, and when you leave at the end, the waiter's emotionally crushed. <laughs> Well, the main course was over, over salty. We saw that. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, because it was mainly, mainly salt. Um, <laughs> but then set off by the dessert, which was delicious. That was um, made of Parma violets. Yes, it was. And there was so little um, burnt porn in, in it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Ian, I know that you've uh, dealt with sandwich, but we should probably talk about chutney. Chutney. <laughs> <laughs> I have learned more about myself on this show than I would have liked. Were his multiple dusts nice, though, to, with the, the chutney <laughs> alongside them? They were, they were ambitious, definitely. It was a yeah. full... Well, at yeah. one point, you started snorting feta, as far as I can work out. <laughs> chopping up lines of cheese. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. It was good. We had a nice time. It was tasty. Nice time for two nice guys, would you say? Yes, it was a smorgasbord of dust. Do you want to score them? Oh, I really want you to score them, because I didn't eat them. I enjoyed Lou's concept, but didn't enjoy the taste, I have to be honest. One point to Lou. OK. Two points. Well, the next? Shant and Paul's were both very basic, very savoury, very sweet. Yes. Uh, Joe's was the second best. I would say Ian's was tremendous dust. We go two points to Shant, three points to Paul, uh, four points to Joe and five points to Ian. There we Bang. go. Got it. Give me more. OK, it's a team task now, and it's a Taskmaster bonding exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, Joe. Hiya. Hello, Sean. Hiya. Hello, Ian. You right? Hello, Paul. Hi, Alex. Hello, Lou. Thank you, we. Right. Make yourselves look like one person. The team that looks and moves most like one person wins. You have 20 minutes. Your time starts when one of you looks at another one of you. Don't look. Um... <laughs> Right, I'm going to I'm gonna get some stuff. No, wait, 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 Ian, no, don't no. go yet. Ian, don't go, cos I can see you. Don't, look don't. down. Everyone, both of you, look down. Can we talk what this through? I'm going to go and shout for the door. We've got to look and move as one, you bellend. I know, but I am going to make a plan. Like, listen. OK. Now we can talk. OK. When it says you've got to look like one person, mm. does that have to be a human person? Do you, do you mean, it, could it be a duck person? So it could be an alien. Is that a person? Yeah. Why don't two of us leave the building, leaving one of us to look and move like one person? No, because it does say on the instructions you have to... The task. It? It's called the task. One, uh, Make yeah. yourselves look like one person. So if we just walk like that, so big so and wellies... That's good. Skis. Oh, you looked at them. <gasps> the time I stuff. didn't do oh, it either. It wasn't... Um, oh, OK, right, we're up against it now. I'm going to go get some bin bags and you... Uh, wait, 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 Ian? Mm -hmm. Can you get a coat and a cane? Uh-huh. <laughs> There wasn't an instant harmony within the teams, was it, really? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good start to a team task, Ian, you bellend. With it. Absolutely justified. <laughs> <laughs> you were very irritated with, <laughs> with Lou's use of certain words. It's a task. <laughs> From a man that says chutney, that is... <laughs> <laughs> I was good at the bit where you had to not look at other people. Yes, you were. <laughs> Even after Sean looked at me, I didn't. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here is how all of them got on in one film. Pop that on. Ian, did you ask for a big coat? No, we're doing bin bags. How are we going to win points for bin bags? Just cover yourself in bin bags. <laughs> so do we just staple that? Yeah, I wonder we'll if there's a, one of them staplers. If you go and shout in the corridor, someone we'll may well bring one in. <clears throat> Staple gun? <laughs> Staple gun. Has it worked? It's worked. Okay. Don't look yet. I've started the clock. Okay. You've looked. Yes, you've looked. Paul. <laughs> Scissors. <laughs> Alex, do you remember me telling you that it's I chipped my tooth? Yes. Um, I chipped it again the other week. Well done. Have you ever chipped a tooth, Jane? I did actually knock out this tooth, uh, mucking around on a ferry. Brian. It was Brian. <laughs> it was Brian Ferry. I'm just going to put a bin bag over your head. Can we do that? Is that a bit dangerous? Maybe cut a hole? I think probably cut a hole. <laughs> Come with me. Come with me. Lou, you're down there. 
Paul, you need to get in between Lou's yeah, legs. Face, face down or face up? Face up, probably, for legal reasons. I've got a lovely dentist. Maybe you can give me his details. Well, well, six minutes. They six. do Botox now, dentists. Do they? Ah. You need to lie me next to Paul so I can be the leg. Can you, can you breathe? Yeah. Right, you lead, Lou, you're the brain. OK. Wow, I must get my cardiovascular in. Here I go with my star jumps. Out, in, out, in, out, in, out. Hello, Joe. Hi. You're walking very gingerly. Yeah, it's feeling really... Oh, yeah. I've been a bit ill. Very different um, teamwork approaches. <laughs> I mean, you had time for a lovely chat about dentistry. <laughs> <laughs> Partly because Sean couldn't find the end of the tape for three minutes. <laughs> Can I ask, was there any need at all for Paul to have his head covered in a bin bag <laughs> as he travelled from house to house? <laughs> <laughs> it did mean Paul didn't say a lot. This is the entirety of what Paul said. <laughs> Just tell me what to do. <laughs> I need some help. And then face down or face up when he was lying in loose. <laughs> Do you want to have them side by side? Yes, you can please. see which is the most convincing. <laughs> <laughs> Joe and Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I am fascinated as to the purpose of the pole that's across. <laughs> and, and I don't know how you can argue that you're moving together <laughs> when clearly Sean is just behind you under a blanket. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. The pole did start off being... It was a cape. It was a cape. It was a cape? I think we were trying to make a giant man and then Sean would sort of be behind it. It's very dramatic, though. It is. I mean, there's some poise to it. This is a bit gross. There's something sort of human centipede about it. <laughs> I mean, even if you squint, that's someone with major medical problems. <laughs> Six days before this, this filming, I had an operation on a right frozen shoulder. I was told not to exercise it in any way for two weeks. Can, can I say it was odd that you agreed to be the arms of the man? <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's a freakish creation. The, the other one's more human, but arguably Sean is just hiding. <laughs> but, but I do like the majestic um, pole shoulders. <laughs> Okay. Oh, so do you think, well, that does look more like one person. Yeah, it's but a human. My, that's because <clears throat> it is one person. <laughs> So, I think it's fair to say three points to the team of three and two points to the team of two. OK, the team of the three, you get three points! <laughs> Give me another task, naughty boy. Well, actually, this task is not quite over, Greg. It's a two-parter. It is a two-parter. <laughs> Exciting. But you'll have to come back and join us in part four to find out what the next part on this task is. of tonight's penultimate episode. Before the break, we'd had one part of the task, but not the other part of the task. Yes, so far the teams have been awarded points for making themselves look like one person. Joe and Sean got two points, Ian, Paul and Lou got three, but little did they know there was another task awaiting them, and here it is. Thank you. If you can open that task, that'd be great. It's for you. This is also for you. Good luck. Thank you. Oh, shit. Uh... Oh, my God, is that another task? <laughs> Just, that. Just tell me what it says. Who are you talking to, Joe? Oh, uh, my back. <laughs> OK. Remaining, yeah, 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 no, 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 no. Back round, back round, back round. Pool, no, back round. How you had it, yeah. Remaining as one person throughout. Remaining as one person throughout, it, uh, it says. Put these yellow Wellington boots, eat this banana and put the banana skin in the yellow bin over there. Put on the Wellington boots, <laughs> eat the banana, put the banana skin in the bin. Fastest wins, your time starts now. OK, three things. Uh, Ian, you can put the welly boots on. Where are they? Just one to your left, one to your right. They're little, aren't they? 
Here we go. Come on, feed me that banana, baby. I'll get the wellies on. Mm. Well, you need to give me directions to the Wellington mm. boys. Let Lou finish the banana. Hey, I went for it. It's going nice and slow. I got it, I got it. OK. Oh. Ian, Ian, to the left. Maybe take your shoes off if you can. Um, I've got it, I've got it. Well done, mate. Oh, oh. Fastest wins, Joe. They're not going to be faster than this. There's something weird moving above me. That's full. You That's meant to still look like one person. Shit, we threw the banana skin away. Why, why do we leave this banana skin? Because we need to put it in the bin. Oh, shit. Goddamn task. OK, roll over there and get the banana skin Let's there. Let's go. That's it. Good lad. Keep in your foot. Let's all roll to our fronts. <laughs> and then give him sense if you go away. <laughs> Go! <laughs> Go! <laughs> Is everyone to... <laughs> Let's go! Please remain as one person. What part of this is not one person? <laughs> oh, is that not incredibly painful? Unbelievable. Oh, get on all fours. <laughs> Thank you. And it's over to Paul. Is it in? Yeah! I've stopped the clock. <laughs> I thought that Joe and Charles was really graceful <laughs> and, and it looked it looked like a religious ceremony <laughs> and even when you made the mistake you very gently picked it on and then looked at camera yes <laughs> it's part of the way we do things <laughs> here at wooden shoulder mountain that's what happens yeah. when you put a cape on mm. that's right and i mean the other team it looked like the end of the fucking world <laughs> <laughs> Lou was trying to keep them out of one person. At one point, she shouted, Get up my arse and wriggle to Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was fastest wind. They took five minutes 43 to travel eight metres. <laughs> uh, Sean and Joe, three minutes 30. So not that much quicker, but they, but they work with. I would have given Sean and Joe less if it hadn't seemed like a pre-planned religious ceremony. <laughs> I'd give them less. But it was so graceful and pleasing to if watch. If you saw that in a cathedral in sort of southern Spain, you think, bloody hell. Yeah. <laughs> but imagine if you saw ours in a church. <laughs> Sean and Joe, I'm giving four points, and the nightmarish vision, I'm giving one point oh, each. Okay. Sean and Joe, four points. Yeah. Look at the scores then, I guess. OK, well, for the first time this series, I think any one of the five could win after the last task. Uh, Ian is currently in the lead by one point. Yeah. Right, all to play for. It's time for you to please head to the stage for the penultimate final task of the show. Hello, everyone. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Greg. Hello, Hello, Alex. Greg. Hello, Greg. Uh, who's going to read the task out? Ian Sterling, please. <laughs> stack the most balls and plates on your head. You must stack them one at a time. Also, you must stand upright when you stack. Also, you may not touch a ball or plate that is already stacked. Also, you must stack the balls and plates alternate. Alternately. <laughs> Don't, yeah, okay, no. Turns out there's quite a few words that are probably. <laughs> I've got a law degree. <laughs> also, you must stay standing at your spot throughout the task. Most balls and plates start correctly after 100 seconds wins. So there are a few rules. We're looking for the most bowls and plates stacked on your head at the end of the 30 uh, plus 70 seconds. That's 100 seconds. <laughs> So you have to bend down each time. And get an individual one and then go back yeah. up right, yes. I understand. Does everyone understand? <laughs> yes. Let's party. Good luck, your 100 seconds starts. <laughs> That's more like it, 
show. One at a time. Lovely. Work it all out, you come down and we'll add it to the final score to the show. <laughs> Hello, sweet cheeks. All okay? Yes, thank you. Yes, it was quite a tense game of bowl stack, plate stack. <laughs> Tensest game I've ever seen of yes, bowl stack, plate stack. Me too. Poor Sean. Oh, oh, is that the only one who dropped them all? Yes. Oh. So, sadly, Sean stacked zero plates or bowls, but gets one point for coming last. Uh, Joe, two points for getting yeah. three bowls or plates. Ian gets three points. Paul, four. A tremendous effort, but the winner of the task was Lou with five points and six. Plate, bowl, plate, bowl, plate, bowl. <laughs> Good. You want to see the scoreboard? I want to see the scoreboard. Yes, well, it has affected it in this way. She has risen to the top with 20 points. Lou wins the episode. <laughs> Lou Sanders is tonight's winner. Please go and get protected. <laughs> so, what have we learned today? We've learned that as a species, it's about time we started being more responsible in our lives. So, the next time you take out a rubbish bag, just pause for a second and double check, because you never know whether there is a wild Paul Sinha lurking <laughs> inside. <laughs> and let's all cheer again for tonight's winner, Lou Sanders. <laughs> We'll see you there! For more Taskmaster, subscribe now.